You can use this for your own private Dungeons and Dragons games, Harry Potter style games, Star Wars fantasy games, whatever, because voices are amazing of Eleven Labs. These are also the sound that we use for our Fably AI app. And here we can even choose different voices. Now, this is the first story, and I love to generate some speech here. You are Tharival Windwalker, an elven rogue who has made a name for himself by delving into dangerous ruins and ancient tombs. Recently, you've heard rumors rumors of a hidden treasure in the long-forgotten tomb of Eldoria. Enticed by the promise of riches, you have decided to embark on this perilous journey. You stand at the entrance to the tomb with nothing but your wits, skills, and gear. The stone door before you is ancient, partially covered in moss and etched with worn runes. What would you like to do next? Take a look around. What do I see? Just describe a little bit. So now we can give this another read. So I put this into 11 laps again, again with Brian. Let's see how we do. To the left side of the door, you notice a series of carvings resembling historical scenes or battles. To the right, you see what looks like an old, decrepit statue of a figure in ceremonial garb. Its features have been worn down by time, but you can still make out the faint glint of something metallic in its hand. So we're already there and looking at those carvings that are not of the best quality anymore, of the like... They are ancient, like maybe thousands of years, you never know in this fantasy world. You see that we can still have like 9,000 left to generate, like 10,000 for free. Thank you very much. 11 Labs, I hope that you guys check them out. It's amazing what kind of quality of voice we get out of here. We're going to do one more move and then, and then I will change up the, the variation of this voice. There is this tomb's entrance that we don't manage to get open so touch and rotate the metallic glint maybe this is some kind of mechanism okay this is the next story and i will give you a little bit more of a variance with brian so let's see what we can do with the settings we can go for a oof instability okay let's go for 30 percent and let's go let's see what we get you approach the statue on the right side of the tomb entrance its features are worn but you can indeed see a metallic object glinting faintly in its hand. Upon closer inspection, you realize the statue is holding a small, ornate lever. Okay, it's not that crazy of a pronunciation, but still a bit more variation in there. Okay, cool. Gingerly, you reach out and grasp the metallic peach piece, then rotate it clockwise. Roll investigation check. Dice roll 14. The lever moves smoothly under your touch, and as you turn it, you hear a low rumbling sound. The door to the tomb begins to slide open slowly, revealing a dark, musty passageway leading into the depth of the ancient structure. What would you like to do next? Enter the passageway. Yeah, of course. Come on. Just run in there. Okay, whoopsie. That wasn't the best idea. I already saw something down there, but we're going to give this to Brian one more time. Ignoring caution, you sprint into the passageway eager to delve deeper into the tomb. The air inside is cool and damp, carrying the scent of ancient stone and decay. Your footsteps echo in the narrow corridor as you move further in. Amazing. So we are already inside, but we sprint down and let's see roll perception check dice roll eight in your haste you fail to notice a thin tripwire stretched across the floor your foot catches on it and with a sudden jerk a hidden mechanism activates releasing a flurry of darts again from the walls this is like a dart temple jungle tomb thingy roll dexterity saving throw Oh, that's not too good. You managed to dodge a few, but several still hit you, embedding themselves into your arms and legs. Injury hit points reduced by eight. Wow, seriously, those darts are mad. Strength reduced by one. The pain is intense and the wounds are bleeding profusely. The darts poison. Poison? Oh no! Also causes your muscle to twitch uncontrollably, making it movement more difficult. What would you like to do next? Oh man, just go on and this time be a bit more careful. I know that we tried to die in the last videos, but this time I'm hopefully not that eager to die. The corridor continues for some distance, gradually widening as you move deeper into the tomb. The air grows colder and you can feel a slight chilling breeze rustling the hair on your neck. Ahead, you see the corridor opening into a larger chamber. Awesome. Your careful scrutiny pays off. You notice that the floor just before the entrance to the chamber is slightly uneven. A telltale sign of potential pressure plates. That's cool. We notice them. You also see faint markings on the wall ahead, which could either be decorative carvings or concealed mechanisms. So not to touch them. 
there are darts inside them again. So we want to choose option C, attempt to bypass the uneven floor by jumping over it. You decide to bypass the uneven floor by jumping over it. Stealing yourself, you're ready to your body and take a short running start. Roll acrobatics, dice roll 17. All right, uh, we're going to run this again and see if this time we may be failing. You decide to bypass the potential trap by jumping over the uneven section of the floor. So this time we roll athletics checks with a dice roll of nine. Okay, this time it's an athletics check. It's not a dexterity. You almost make it, but your weak condition from the previous injuries Reduce your jump distance slightly, your foot lands on the edge of the uneven floor and you hear the low click of a pressure plate being activated. Oh no. Immediately, the walls on either side of the corridor start to move inward, threatening to crush me. Oh my god, I thought there will be some darts coming out again. Huh. Roll dexterity saving throw. A 10, that's not too good. You barely managed to dive forward into the larger chamber just as the walls slam shut behind you. You are avoid getting crushed but strain you already injured muscles in the process. Okay, we get a small injury. Hit points reduced by two, strength reduced by another time by one. As you catch your breath, you find yourself in a spacious chamber with various ancient relics and artifacts littered around. Torches strangely lit on the walls illuminate a large, ominous looking door on the opposite side of the chamber. We just want to think on, your, on our own this time. Check out the artifacts. Is there anything useful? You carefully examine each object Object, hoping to find something useful for your journey. Amazing. So there's another check. Okay, we rolled a 19. I'm just going to repeat this roll. Maybe we can get it. Okay, now we rolled a 18. Perfect. Your keen eye and experience as a rogue allow you to quickly spot an item of interest. Among the relics you find a pristine healing potion, an ancient amulet, a coiled rope, and a rusty key. That's important. Drink the pot and take the rusty key to the door. Okay, we roll our healing. So we have a seven, so we get seven back from 11 back to 18, feeling much better. And now the door is imposing and covered in ancient runes. A keyhole is prominently featured in the center. You insert the rusty key and turn it slowly, hearing a satisfying click. Perfect. What would we like to do next? Ooh, so there's a dark stairway downwards. So we're going to test ChatGPT's common sense again. Sit on the rail of the stairway and slide downwards quickly. Like have some fun in the dungeon, right? Given your weakened condition and previous injury, sliding down the stairway rail should be incredibly dangerous and not advisable. I repeat what I said in the previous video. I love you, ChatGPT40. What would you like to do next? Just go downstairs, come on. Okay, there's a dice roll again, a 12. I'd like to repeat it and see if we fail because I see that we made it. Okay, stupid. There is no more dice roll because going down a stair does not necessarily require good dexterity. After a tense few minutes of descent, the stairway opens into another chamber, dimly lit by phosphorescent fungi growing along the walls. This chamber is round and has three exits leading in different directions. In the center of the room, there is a large ornate pedestal with a dusty tome resting on it. So now we can try what I told you earlier. We are in a chamber dimly lit by phosphorin fungi and I really think that Stable Diffusion 3 could give us an amazing image for this. So we are just putting this into Stable Diffusion and see the results. Wow, amazing image with the bluish and dark ominous theme here. There's this tome in the middle and we can even give give it some some guidance like maybe it's like old painting style or something like this. But I really like it. I just took exactly one to one the text from JetGPT into Stable Diffusion 3 and it gave me this image. And now we can really feel where we are and you can use this for your own Dungeons and Dragons adventures. And now we are here in the center of this chamber. We should really see what the tomb is about. I don't want to get any more creative than it is necessary. There's a dice roll. 19. Okay, we're just going to do this one more time. See if we have a different number this time. Okay, not the best roll. 
a 12. Okay, we are, we approach the tome with an intelligence roll of 12 and we get that there are, are three paths. The path of the shadows, described as a corridor filled with deceptive illusions and deadly traps, so we want to avoid this. A trail inhabited by fierce creatures, guardians of the tomb. We want to avoid this one for sure. And the path of trials, a series for complex puzzles and trials designated to test one's intellect and resolve. Wow. All right. All three of them are terrible. But we will choose the path of the beasts. We had enough traps already. We have been hit by enough darts. And we're just going to check out the path of Path of the Beasts. And maybe I will come back here and see what the Path of Trials would have looked like. So we're going into this Path of the Beasts and drawing our short sword and dagger. We roll a stealth check. Oh, that was, was bad. Your injuries and fractured focus betray you. You step on a loose stone, making a loud clattering noise. Combat encounter with some wolves glowing with malice their eyes combat encounter dire wolf three with 15 hp each what would you like to do attempt to hide and use your rogue stills to gain an advantage we could try and if there's a dice roll we can still try to roll it again okay we could we look to roll it again to see if the second time is different okay we have a worse dice roll but we still managed to find a shadowy alcove and slip into it quietly the wolves, confused by a sudden disappearance, start sniffing around and growling, unsure of where you went. From your hidden position, you have an opportunity to strike with elements of surprise. What would you like to do next? Sneak attack the nearest dire wolf with your short sword. Or we can throw our dagger from our hidden position at the nearest dire wolf. We, sh we throw the dagger. Let's hope that it works. Okay, we have a 17 and a 9. Take the highest. You have plus 4 dexterity. Roll attack with advantage. A surprise attack. I got it. Okay, your dagger flies through and strikes the nearest dire wolf. Okay, we're just going to run this again. See what kind of different result we get. Oh, this time we get a 20. That is amazing. Critical hit. The dagger flies from your hands striking the dire wolf with precision and force directly in the throat. Oh, I'm sorry for all the, those animal lovers out there. I feel you. Roll damage with critical. Dice roll 10. Damage 13. The dire wolf lets us a gurgled yelp before collapsing dead. Wow. So now there are two left. So I think we should try to attack with our short sword. No, sword. Now there are two left. Attack with the sword and jump out of surprise there are a lot of dice rolls in there so i don't think that the randomness that we implemented in the last video is still in here but let's see so we decide to leap out with a, an attack of 16 we connect oh that's amazing and we get seven damage now we try to roll out of their attack and we sidestep the wolf our rogue is really in the in the lead i think i will roll this again not because i want to die but i just want to see if they give me some verse results the next time much more text here feeling the thrill of your successful stealth attack you decide to jump out again okay your swift move catches the dire wolf of guard again okay this is easy dice roll nine damage your short sword slices into the dire wolf's flank causing a deep wound the wolf holds in pain but still standing the third wolf seeing you out in the open leaves the tech now he has a 16. Okay, this should hit. The wolf manages to land a bite on your arm with 8 damage. Oh, that's insane. The bite is painful and clamps down hard, leaving deep puncture wounds. Oh no. Let's let's attempt to finish off this one wolf. That's what you always should do in all of those Dungeons and Dragons kind of games. And now we got it. The second wolf is dead. Third wolf attacks us but we managed to dodge it. Very good. So now we have four options. We can go on the offensive and attack the remaining wolf with our sword, which is the obvious choice. And then we go deeper into this dungeon. And I hope that you stay in tune for the next video where we will find out what will happen here. Bye bye.